Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and it's time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 365. I'm going to give you a heads up right now. I have vertigo right now. <laughs> as long as I keep my head straight and I'm on medication, we should be fine. But if I fumble and bumble just a little bit, know that I have a horrible case of vertigo. I actually taped this YouTube yesterday night and that was the start of the vertigo and it was it was so bad <laughs> that I'm taping it again in hopes of making a better class for you. At least now I have medication in me. Yesterday it started and I didn't have any meds in me and I was just like, ooh. So one day I may go back and watch that video <laughs> and, and maybe pull some bloopers off of it because I can only imagine I can only imagine. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> now, last week was our anniversary sale. Thank you all so, so much for your well wishes and your happy anniversaries. And who would have ever thunk, and boy, are we ever so grateful <laughs> to still be here. But I don't have winner winner for you today. And that is because during our anniversary sale, we usually pull 100 winners and we have prizes for all of them. It, those prizes come from winners who didn't claim previous prizes and manufacturers who are kind enough to send some things to us to help support us. But being that COVID 2020 has happened, I didn't know how many prizes we were going to have. So during some of our downtime, and when I mean downtime, the only downtime we have here at Scrapbooking Made Simple is if our internet and phones are down. If the internet and is, phones are down, we're pretty much dead in the water totally so we went ahead and started packaging up anniversary sale prizes quite some time ago but i didn't know how many of the girls had gotten done so last week i didn't know if we had 50 or 70 or 100 turns out we have 114 all ready to go so we're going to give out 114 prizes for this and maybe we should have done 120 nope 114 prizes for this anniversary sale that means I will be doing another YouTube in a week or so, definitely after my vertigo is gone, to announce all the winner winners. And if you have exhausted your Hulu and your Netflix and your Amazon Prime and your Disney Plus, and you have nothing left to watch, wait till you see me try to pronounce the names that we select for winner winner chicken dinners. When the computer spits out all the names, oh, I feel like that's, when the computer spits out all the names and I look at it and was like, oh, really? Can't they all be just Smith and Park and Brown and <laughs> Williams? And no, we get some doozies and watching me try to pronounce them is, is an experience. So you might find some comic relief in that. I don't know that we'll have it done next week, but I will do my best. It just depends upon how my vertigo goes. <laughs> now, what else do I have to tell you? Curbside pickup. Curbside pickup is coming to Scrapbooking Made Simple. And in fact, this is the first, the first week we are offering curbside pickup. There is a video you must watch if you are a local peep. And this curbside pickup only applies to local peeps. If you're in Wisconsin or Wyoming or Tennessee or Maine or, or Brisbane or um i i london then then the then the curbside pickup doesn't apply to you at all but if you are a local peep meaning you live somewhere here in sunny california and you usually come to scrapbooking made simple to do your shopping as opposed to online shopping well watch the video there is some very specific things that need to be done for curbside pickup because obviously we wouldn't be having it if it wasn't for COVID-19. It is also not an unlimited curbside pickup. We're going to try this. We're going to try curbside pickup for the first time. Our store has been closed since mid-March. It will not be reopening until 2021. I just heard people's mouth go, I need to get through the flu season. I need to see that, that the numbers don't creep up during the flu season. We just have too much to be to be thankful for to then not protect it 
and that includes my employees and their families and my family and your family. So I just want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to ensure that, that, that people stay healthy and well. And so we're going to try curbside pickup. Again, you must watch the YouTube. And if you go to scrapbookingmadesimple.com, you'll see at the top, right underneath our logo, there's a line that says curbside pickup at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Click that. There's a video there for you to watch and it will explain everything. We will modify things as we learn. This is a learning process for us. So we will modify things as we go through the curbside pickup. So I'm excited to offer it. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Fingers crossed and just know we understand that our local customers miss coming to the store and we miss having you here. I miss seeing you on Saturdays. I miss talking to you. I miss hearing about your life. I miss sharing my life with you. So so if this if this helps in any way, then we're gonna give it a whirl. Okay. So between curbside pickup and anniversary sale. Holy smokes, artichokes. This YouTube is all about the next two kaleidoscope layering stencils, and I love them. I do, I do. <laughs> I also have two new versus stamp sets for you, and I, I love them. I do, I do. And finally, I have the tale of two watercolor paints. I will tell you about that. I have two different watercolor paints. One of them that we have had forever and that honestly in my opinion every single crafter should own these for the price they're when they're on a youtube yummy they're less than eight dollars you should own the set because it is a fabulous set by yasutomo but then but then <laughs> i found out well i didn't find out Kim, who, who is a manufacturer's rep, walked into my store, well, she's actually my neighbor, and, um, and said, hey, I've got these, we rep these in the fine art market, and I think you might like them. So I took a look at them and I'm like, oh, swoon. And then SMS Girl Doris and Claire took a look at them and they swooned. And so I said, well, okay, let's see what they do and let's see how they act different because they are a completely different price point. They are from the fine art market. But I don't want that to scare you at all. Fine art does not mean you have to be the fine artist. It means the product you're working with is of a higher quality. Fine art market products are for painters and sculptors and, and, and people who, who do sell their works to people like me, but but it doesn't mean that you can't use them just because that you're not considered an artist. In fact, often a beginner will have much better results using a product that is of better quality. Just like if you're baking chocolate chip cookies, what chocolate chips do you use to make those cookies? You know, it. it do you use chocolate chips that have been in the pantry for 12 years? <laughs> or do you use chocolate chips that you just bought and are fresh and are beautiful and yummy? It, 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 it just depends. You know, olive oil, do you, do you, if you're using olive oil in your cooking, do you use the $2 bottle? Or are you gonna get the same result buying olive oil that is $2 a bottle versus maybe $12 a bottle? Is the taste going to be different? Yes. You may be happy with the $2 bottle of olive oil, and that's perfectly fine. But you might also like the $12 bottle of olive oil if you see the difference. So I'm going to show you both of them so you can see what they do and why there is such a price difference. And then I'm going to leave it up to you whether you need just the Yasutomo for the $8 or you like the fine tech product, which is not $8. It's $56, but then it'll be on a YouTube yummy. I know, but this is the bigger set, one of the bigger sets. I know, but you'll see the difference. You, you may want both of them and you may not want either of them. That then becomes up to you, what you want to put your crafty budget towards. Maybe you love watercolor painting. Maybe you do it all the time. You're going to love the fine tech. 
Maybe you, you just want to put a little shimmer and shine on something every now and then. Well, then we have the Yasutomo because we will always carry the Yasutomo. It is what we started with. And again, for the price, it's Rockstar. So I think today I am actually going to start with showing you the difference between the paints and then we will move on to the stencils and see what you think. I also have the card that my son James finished. It's his first crafty card ever. He did, he did an amazing job. I'm, I don't want to say I'm shocked. I'm pleasantly surprised. He did use one of my stencils, so I'm going to show that to you as well. Who knew? And now he wants to do more. He'd like to go down at, during his lunch one day a week while they're making samples for the YouTube and at least do one. And I'm like, dude, come on down. <laughs> We're happy to have you make a sample during your lunch. So anyway, I'm going to tilt on down. We're going to get started for today. It's good to see you. This is our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 365. Down we go. And hopefully my vertigo stays in check. So if I bobble around a little bit, I'm going to just ask you to please be understanding. Let's go in. This was not planned but I don't think vertigo is ever planned but I am on medication so I have to get this done before I start falling asleep <laughs> okay so no this is not the card James did if this was the card James did I, I would have him on camera <laughs> he'd be your new teacher <laughs> but this is one of the new simply defined stencils <laughs> now the Simply Defined stencils are layering stencils. So you get three stencils per set. They're value priced at $9.99 and it is what allows you to do all the shading, the shadowing, the detail work. Beautiful, right? So this is one of the sets of stencils. And then I have James's card, which is the other set. Yes, he did this, right? Is that amazing? It was all fabulous. I was so excited until, until he showed me, he goes, look, mom. And I'm like, honey, <laughs> cards open this way. I actually didn't have, I, 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 I didn't have the heart to really tell him too much that I just said it was fabulous. I said, gosh, if I had known before you put everything down, we could have orientated the card and gone this way too. And he's like, oh, it's perfect and I said you're right it's absolutely perfect so my son James's first card he's 19 years old and I think he did a really good job <laughs> okay so like I said I think we're gonna start with the paints now this is our Yasutomo paints these are a pearlescent watercolor paint it's literally eight dollars for the whole thing and then when it's on a YouTube yummy sale it's even less and there's a decent amount of paint in each one but the pigment i think you're going to see the main thing is that the pigment is not as high as what's in the fine tech now the fine tech and i've been using mine this is the pretty box that it comes in Ooh, ah. and this is the pretty tin that it comes in but when you open it and you'll see i've used mine these are the colors look at i'm totally into that one now not nearly as many colors a lot more paint no question about it there's there's so much paint in these little tubs and what's nice about these is that they are replaceable so if you are loving this color and you go th through this color so fast eventually we will have all of the open stock as well and you just push it down so you could make your own palettes once we bring in the open stock i did bring in the rainbow set first it is one of the larger sets most of the sets are only six colors and so I brought in the larger set so that you could start with a good foundation of colors you have a blue you have a green you have a yellow you have a gold you have a red you have a burgundy you have kind of a shimmery you wanted to have a nice representation of colors and slowly but surely we'll start bringing in the, the packs of six and the packs of six my understanding is there's nothing that overlaps in total there's 38 colors or 38 pans 
And again, the pans are full. They're very heavy in paint. And these will last you a very, very long time because they use very little water. Unlike the Yasutomo, where you will need far more water to, to make these go versus here. So you're gonna go through these paints much faster. However, they're $8 for all of it, as opposed to $56. And then I think we're doing either 25 or 30% off on the set to help bring it to the, the price down. They are beautiful. I wanna show you the difference between them. So I'm gonna tilt my camera on back just a little bit so I have a little more space for you. And I'm gonna bring these back here. And today I'm gonna to be playing with both watercolor paper and regular paper. So let's see if I can bring these into camera and still have room for some paper. I think I got it. Okay, so I think I'm just gonna start with black and this is just 100 pound cardstock. I have got my paintbrush and I have already gone ahead and I have misted. I have misted my paints because I need my paints to be what they call open or I need them to bloom. Watercolor paints, when they're wet, you don't need to dry them later to close up the lids. Watercolor paints love water. You just, you leave it open, you let them dry, and, and then you can close them all up again. You don't try to try to get that water out of there by any means. I've got my little brush, and I think I'm going to play with this gold right here. And because I've already misted them, it's already kind of loose and is letting me grab some of the paint. And I'm just gonna paint it on my black. It's a shimmer, not a, a glitter. It's got a sheen to it. It's a metallic looking type product. And that is what you get with the Yasutomo. Now let's come in and grab some of my fine tech which would be what they consider a more fine art quality paint again doesn't mean you have to be a fine artist it just means that the quality of the materials you're working with is of a higher quality and I don't know if you can even see it from from here that it's far more pigmented meaning that gold is a standout gold Yasutomo Fine Tech. Big difference. Not that there's anything wrong with this. This may be perfect for you. You may be happy with that. You would need to keep layering and layering. You would let it dry and then you'd layer and then you'd let it dry and then you'd layer. It would take quite a few layers of the Yasutomo to achieve this, assuming you could achieve this, that level of coverage. It really depends upon what it is you do um, and what your crafty budget is and how you want to allocate that crafty budget. Let's try paper towel. Oh, but maybe wipes. Let's try maybe this one here. Oh, see, I'm almost to the bottom. Yeah, let's try this one here. And you can see I'm really trying to pick up a lot of paint. I'm really trying to get some paint on here. So that it gets really good coverage. But no matter how much you put on, if the pigment isn't there to add the color to, the pigment isn't there. Now let's try with our, let's try with our fine tech. Hmm. 
Maybe this color's the closest. And again, very little water with fine tech. And I'm hoping you're able to see even from here, from the distance, the difference in the paint. And I don't have to pick up nearly as much because it is so much more pigmented. So I'm not here to tell you one is better than the other. I'm here to tell you they're different. And, and you can see why they're different. But if you're in a craft store, well, I don't know that you'd find fine tech in any normal craft store, but there's a reason why these are much more expensive than the Yasutomo. Not that the Yasutomo isn't a great product because for that price point, holy smokes artichokes, I have never seen anything better than this. But if you were comparing the two just on a shelf, how would you know what the difference is unless you can physically see it? They look kind of the same in the pans. This blue looks just like that blue and this one looks very close to that one and the golds look the same. How do you know what the difference is? unless somebody shares it with you. And then you can make an informed decision for you. Here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, now that we have seen these, we have to have them. There's just no question about it. The girls went absolutely crazy for it. Um, everybody who I have shown them to has gone crazy for it. And thankfully, the rest of most of the other sets are sets of six. And the colors don't overlap but I'm never gonna not carry the Yasutomo because it has a place in, in our crafty world here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Now, when it comes to watercolor paints, one of the biggest things they say is, one of the biggest tests for them, for the shimmers and the metallics is, how well does it work on white? That tends to be the big um, sticking point for watercolor paints on the metallic range. You know that they look beautiful on, on black. I mean, the Yasutomo looks pretty. The Fine Tech looks pretty. It's a little more muted. It's a little more intense. But how does it work on white? And that is the true test of a metallic watercolor paint. So let me get my brush wet again and let's go back and let's get into some of my my gold. And I wanna pick up as much paint as I can so we have a fair comparison. Fair comparison. So there's my gold on white. Now let's go in and do my fine tech. and see what we get. Same thing, I wanna pick up some paint so that you get an accurate comparison. So white. And you can see again, the fine tech because of the amount of pigment it has really on white is as pretty as it is on black. Let's do our little burgundy color here. Boy, it's time for me to get a new set. I guess I really love this color. I'm almost out. <laughs> Let's pick up some color and on white. So we have a fair comparison. And then let's pick this up, up on the fine tech.
apples to apples. That's how you have to look at product, apples to apples. It's not fair to go apples to oranges, but apples to apples, knowing that you may be happy with both apples. And again, this is on my paper. This is on my 100 pound paper. Can you imagine what it'll look like on watercolor paper? It's beautiful. And the fine tech is going to last you a whole lot longer than the Yasutomo only because of the amount of paint in each, in each little pot. Just for that purpose alone, it's going to last you a lot longer, but you're also going to use less water. So now you have the opportunity to make a decision. What works best for you? Are you a girl who, or a guy who, uh, the, the fine tech are usually used in calligraphy. That's where it's found most often is in calligraphy. Fine calligraphers use fine tech all the time, but holy smokes artichokes. Do you wanna have this set? For when you just want to add a quick little embellishment and a hint of shimmer and this set when you want to do the technique I'm going to show you or do you just need the fine tech or are you saying Stacy I don't like either of them I'm gonna pass don't worry I've got something else for you <laughs> I just think it's only fair to show you why and what and then you make the informed decision for your crafty journey it's whatever works best for you. Will we always carry them? I'm 100% positive we'll always have the Yasutomo. For as long as Yasutomo makes this palette, we will carry it. This is great for kids, it's great for seniors, it's great for everybody, under eight bucks. The fine tech we're gonna start bringing in and we're gonna see how things go. I expect it to go well because I know how well my girls just looked at them and went ooh and aw. So I'm gonna put these back up for a little bit and now we're gonna start with the stencils and we're actually not going to start with any of the watercolors. We're gonna talk about my Simply Defined stencils. And I have two new ones for you. I have the new leaf and there are three A2 stencils in there with my signature little tabs on them. And then I have my new birdhouse on a fence. And those were the two samples I showed you. Again, in each pack is three stencils. Three stencils that allow you to layer. That's why they're called kaleidoscope stencils because my kaleidoscope dies are the same way. It allows you to layer the stencils on top of each other to give a full image. Or you can use the stencils on their own individually. So if I pull, here's the set of the leaves. And here are the three stencils. There is the first stencil that, again, this is just a beautiful stencil all on its own. You may not want to add the extra detail to it, but you can. And then to make sure that your background comes out beautiful, there's a mask or a third stencil. You could use your detail stencil with your mask stencil. You could use your, uh, your full stencil with your mask stencil. Or you could use them, you could use this all by itself. It's up to you how you want to layer them. But the idea is to give you as many options as possible. You've got options and they're value priced at $9.99. Not for one stencil, but for all three. And they've got my, my little trademark tabbies on the side so it's easier to put them down. So we are gonna start with these first. And I'm actually gonna start with inks as opposed to the watercolor paints because I wanna make, I wanna start assuming that some of you out there have never seen a stencil before and how to use it. So for that, I can come in just a little bit more. So I wanna go ahead and play with a stencil as if you've never seen it before. And I'm going to start 
with my my base stencil or my fullest stencil the one with the most design to it some people would think that you start with this stencil and do your background first and then come back in on top but i'm not going to do that i'm going to start with my most detailed stencil. And I am gonna tape it down. Now I will tell you, I am almost out of, of my inexpensive washi tape. So um, I had these prototypes from Ellison, from Sizzix, for their, it's, it's a, a maker, I think they call it maker's tape, which is a fancy way of saying a nice little washi tape. It's gridded, which is kind of nice. And it's reasonably priced. So we've gone ahead and we've brought them in. You get two rolls. And I can't remember, gosh, I can't remember if it's $3.99 for two rolls or, but it'll be on a YouTube Yummy. So I'm going to tape my, my stencil down. And I have obviously, I've put on my tabs, I've added tabs to my stencils so that you actually have a place to tape down. I didn't on my first round of stencils, but I was learning. Just like curbside pickup, as I learn, we do better. We try to do better as I learn. Let's see, I wanna go down just a little bit more. There we go. And I'm gonna start with just some inks. So I've got some ombre inks from Hero. I've got some Hero Arts little QB inks. And I think I'm going to start with I think I'm going to start with a uh, yellow because I usually start everything with a yellow. And let me bring over a couple brushes and get this brush a little clean. Okay, works for me. So I've got my blending brush. And I'm just going to go in there and I'm going to add some color. And I'm just adding yellow to all my little leaves. Now you'll notice that I'm not staying within the, the outline of the leaf. I'm actually going into the background and that is going to be a-okay. So I'm just adding a base color of some yellow because that's just me, it's what I do. And then I think I'm going to bring over a little bit of A little bit of maybe some pumpkin and add a little darker color in there and then I'm going to bring over some green got a brush that's got more green to it and I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna grab some green oh but before I do that oh I'll just do a little bit of green a little bit of green a little bit of green but then I'm gonna add my second layer my second stencil and I'm gonna line that right up on top of my first. I'm not gonna pick up my first stencil, I'm gonna lay it right on top. And I'm gonna tape it down as well. So I'm gonna lay this right over the top. tape it on down. I'm not picking up my first stencil. I'm just going to put this right down on top and leave that first stencil there in place. And now maybe I come back with more green just in that area. And 
come back with more green. So what we end up with is looking like a hot mess. And if I wanted to, I could add just a little bit, maybe a little bit more pumpkin in there. Oops. Maybe just to warm it up a little bit. And right now I've got my my second level of stencil on it. So I'm looking here. It doesn't look like anything I know, but now I'm gonna pop off that second level. And I'm gonna put on my mask right over the top. And if I want to, I can go back in if I wanna add a little more color anywhere and blend in anywhere. totally up to you what you want to do. I think I do want to add a little pumpkin right there. There we go. And put my mask over the top. And tape it on down. think we should do the background and you can see that I obviously went over and out of the lines and that my background my paper has already got ink on it don't worry it's okay I promise you you are not trying to be so specific and trying to stay inside the lines how about we use how about we use how about we use a blue? I have no idea. We'll see what it is. Right now, it's only paper. That's all we've used is paper, some Sizzix tape, and some stencils. So if you're not happy with it, that's okay. It's just paper. However, if you get this far, you have to finish. So if you fin if you get this far with your with your your stenciling, your card front, whatever you're going to use it for, you have to finish it. No throwing it away. You've got to build that card, finish that layout with it, lay it down. If when you're done, you're not happy with it, then you can make a change. But chances are, what you think looks like a hot mess is fabulous once you give it the opportunity to be finished. Even if you have to walk away from it for a, a little while to come back and say, chances are you're going to look at it and go, gosh, that really is better than what I thought it was. The, the sad thing is when you get this far into something and then you are disappointed with it without giving it an opportunity to finish. You know, what if you... What if you threw all the stuff in for your spaghetti sauce? What if you put all your tomatoes and your garlic and your, 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 your basil and your oregano, what if you put all of that into your spaghetti sauce and never turned the heat on <laughs> and expected it to be delicious? It can't, it needs to simmer, it needs to come mingle. <laughs> That's what you're doing. Can you tell I'm hungry? <laughs> That's what you're doing when you don't finish uh, your project, when you throw it away before you've given it an opportunity to be all that it can be. All right, do we think we're good? You like that? We're good? Okay. So lids on everything because I'm the worst at that. So here we go. And I pull my Pull my top one off and here we go and oh that's a good place to put them I pull my bottom one off oh 
Ah, ooh, I do like it with the blue. It looks very um, Caribbean-ish, Tahiti or Hawaii. And then let's pull, let's take it on out. What looked like a hot mess now makes you look like a rock star. And it can only be done with dye or with stencils that layer. What do you think? Not bad, huh? <laughs> I got a little blue in it from my finger, but other than that, not bad. That would make a beautiful, that would make a beautiful embellishment on a layout. It would make a beautiful card. It would, if you're doing mixed media or alt, alt, altered art, you've got an opportunity with these. But let's do another one. And I'm going to stay on my, I'm going to stay on my white paper for right now. I'm going to wipe these down because I think I'm going to change color schemes. You know what? I have another one. We'll just, can I do that? Do I have an, I do. I have another one. Hmm. <laughs> All right. We'll come back. I'm going to use another one. No, I'm going to wipe these down. That's ridiculous. Why waste, waste another one when all I have to do is wipe these down? It'll take me a half a second. You'll understand. I'll wipe them down a little bit. So they are a laser cut plastic. They're hardy. I know the lines look really thin, but they're a really great laser cut plastic. So you can wash these and wipe them down and they're not going to tear. And I'm just giving them a quick wipe down. That way if I use a different color, it will be okay, but I think it'll be okay anyway. All right, we're just gonna go for it. It's only paper. And I'm still not gonna use, well, maybe I will. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna put the, my first one down. Maybe we will use some of the Yasutomo now. my first one down. And me being me, I'm going to start with my yellow. And it doesn't matter what ink you use. What ink do you have? Do you have the Hero Arts inks? Do you have Stampin' Up! inks? Do you have Lawn Fawn inks? Do you have Memento inks? What do you have? Go for it. Do you have a few of these and a few of that and a little over here and a color over there? Mix them up. You don't have to be loyal to a brand. Pick the colors you like from the brands that you buy from and go for it. These are dye-based inks. Can you mix dye-based inks with reactive-based inks? Sure you can. It's only reactive if you add water. <laughs> you don't need anything special. Okay, I got some yellow but this time this time i think i'm going to use ooh that's awful pretty what if i use this let's just add oh let's just add a little color ooh that's awful pretty Okay, and then let's put the second one on. Ooh, ooh, I have an idea. Let's add some more yellow. Let's really, really get this dark. Let's get this going. Ooh, I have an idea. So I went up back, got some more yellow. I'm 
going between the two of them just to give me some really beautiful blends. You see I'm not cleaning my brush out in between. And maybe even just a little bit of pumpkin. Again, can you tell I'm hungry? <laughs> I don't think it's the, I don't think it's the medication. <laughs> oh, ooh, I like that. Okay, this is where we're at right now. Oh, I like that. Then, then we're gonna take our second layer. Um, put stuff away, I know I make a mess. Put stuff away, put stuff away. We're gonna take our second layer and put it right on top. Help if it was going in the right direction. Right on top. I'm pretty close there and a little more Sizzix tape and down we go and maybe just a little piece right there okay this time instead of adding more ink to it I'm going to take my thin brush I'm going to take one of my blending brushes that's really kind of small I'm gonna get it a little wet and I'm gonna put it into my Yasutomo, into my gold. Now I wanna make sure it's not too wet, so I've gotta take off some of that water. I want this to be more like a paste. It needs to be not quite a paint and not quite a paste. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna add it on top. So I want it not a thick paste. You don't want a thick paste, but you don't want a thin paint either. And I just wanna add some in there. And I'm using my small brush so I keep control over it and so that it doesn't say so wet that it seeps out. I'm trying to avoid that. So this is a great use of the Yasutomo when you just wanna add some accent. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm just gonna do that main one and maybe I add Ooh, maybe I add a little bit of this color up here. I'll make sure I don't have it too wet. And maybe I put some of that on top of it too. So I'm adding in this, this uh, burgundy-ish color up here. Just for a little shimmer and shine. And I'm just kind of spouncing it. And this is with the $8. This is with the $8 product. So when you, you want a night, it's just a little hint of a shimmer, a wink. A wink of a shimmer. Don't know how that's gonna look, but we're gonna give it a try, right? It's only paper. Okay, now I'm gonna take my second one off. Ooh. And I'm gonna go over it now and do my background. Okay, what color for the background? Should we do maybe a green? Line this up, put this on. Remembering that I have gone out of the lines and I said, don't worry. So I know 
I know that there's yellow and there's red already on my background. I know that. But I'm going to take my green, because I think I've decided on green. Get some of my blue out of my brush. And... Oh, how did I get my fingerprint in there? Gosh, I'm the worst about fingerprints. And where that red is and where that yellow is, that green is going to blend into it. Oh, I need to put a... There we go. That red and that yellow that I had down there, don't worry, the green is going to blend right into it. You can do this. It's only ink. I haven't really played. Well, I added a little bit of the Yasutomo. Not much, but a little bit. We'll see what we get. It might have been too wet. It might have been perfect. But the beautiful thing is it's only paper. And you have to be, you have to let it finish. So there we are. Take off my first stencil. Take off my second stencil. And now you've got a little, oh, it was a little wet, but you've got a little bit of Yasutomo. And they're just adding a little extra little sparkle shine. It was a little wet. I didn't take off quite as much water as I wanted to. But it added just a little sparkle, a little shimmer. Not a glitter, a shimmer. What do you think? You can do this. You can. I promise you. But now, now it's time to play with the fine tech. And again, I'm going to, let me put those there. I'm going to play with the fine tech on watercolor paper. So I'm going to bring over a sheet of black watercolor paper. And we will have this on sale. It is by, I believe this is the Van Gogh um, brand. It's beautiful black watercolor paper. We have it in two sizes. We have it in A4, and then we have it in the cutest little postcards. Little postcard size, and you just do your, do your inking and your stamping and your watercoloring right on top. Address it, stick a stamp on it, and you're good to go. So these are by Van Gogh, and then we'll have a white postcard as well. And that's gonna be by, I believe, the Royal Talons brand. So we'll have them all on the YouTube Yummies. But right now, I'm gonna play with this. And I am still gonna use my leaf stencil, because that's the one we're working with today. And one, two, three. Okay, I've got all three pieces. Now. I have been, since I started, I've been doing this piece first. It's the first piece I've been playing with. We're not going to do that for this technique. We're going to start right away with the uh, Fine Tech watercolor metallics, and they're beautiful. So I'm going to kind of move those over here. I want to make sure everybody can see. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna get my, I think I'm gonna use a little bit of this one, which is kind of the orangey color, coppery color. Get it wet. 
get it moving, open it up. And if you want to, you can absolutely go in there and do some spritzes. That will help keep them kind of open. And I'm gonna paint. And I think you can already see the type of coverage you're gonna get with very little paint. And I can add some water to my watercolor paper. Now, why do you use watercolor paper over just a basic cardstock, like a 100 pound cardstock? Well, for the amount of water I'm gonna be using with this technique, my cardstock, anybody's cardstock, is eventually going to start to warp and you may start to see it disintegrate, meaning it's going to start to bub or ball up and have little balls on it. I'm gonna be using quite a bit of water with this technique. And so you wanna have the right materials, the right tools to do the job. Could you do this with a 100 pound cardstock? Yes, we did, absolutely. You just need to know that you need to be a little gentler and uh, when, you're, when we get to the next part, so that you don't uh, you don't disintegrate the paper. Yeah, we have samples of it done with hundred pound cardstock, just so you feel you can do it. Okay, so I've got some of that color, and let's grab some of that. Now I could blend these and make the most beautiful backgrounds. And then let's pull maybe some of that gold, just a little bit of that gold in. Now I'm, I'm kind of making a background, but, but not totally. Let's grab a little bit of that gold and just wash some of that gold. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like that. And it's going to dry, you can see how wet it is. If this was 100 pound cardstock, it would start breaking down the fibers of the paper, but I'm on watercolor paper, so it's not. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my stencil number one, and I'm gonna put it right down on top. And I'm gonna take my tape and I'm gonna tape it down good. I wanna tape this down good. Okay. So now I've got my most detailed stencil right on top and I've taped it down good. The next step, oh Stacy, don't make a mess. The next step, baby wipes. This is where anybody who does fine art and knows the product that we're using, the Fine Tech, is going to say, are you really going to use baby wipes with those beautiful watercolor metallic, <laughs> metallic palettes? Yes, yes I am, I'm going to use a baby wipe. I know, it's okay, it's crafting, be free. <laughs> Just because you can do fine art doesn't mean you can't get down and craft too. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna take my baby wipe and I'm gonna start pulling the color back up. And I'm gonna need to move my baby wipe around. And I'm gonna start pulling my color back up. Now, I don't care if I go outside the lines again. I don't care if I pull the color up from around the leaf. Uh, it's perfectly fine with me. 
but I want to start pulling the color up off of my watercolor paper. And I think now that you see what I'm doing, you can understand why if I was using basic cardstock, I might end up having it uh, destroy or disintegrate the cardstock depending on how hard I rub to get the ink off. And the more you are able to get that ink off, the better. So I'm just going to turn it into itself and onto itself and I'm going to try and pull the ink off from all of my leaves. And again, it doesn't matter to me that I am taking it off the background too. I'm okay with that. And I'm giving good pressure. I'm getting in there and rubbing pretty good and I'm using a baby wipe to control the amount of moisture. I don't want to use a paintbrush because then it will be too wet. You could use maybe a sponge, a very damp sponge to pull this off, but I have found a baby wipe will do just the ticket. And I'm pulling it off. Okay, and I think I'm gonna take one more baby wipe so you can see, it's om I've almost taken off everything I've done. I'm gonna take one more baby wipe that's totally clean and I'm just gonna go over it one more time. Okay. I think I'm good. Hopefully I didn't take too much off. But you know what, if I did, I can go back and start again. All right, there we go. Now I'm gonna leave that on there and I'm gonna bring back, I'm gonna bring back my layer, my top layer, my mask. I'm gonna get rid of some of this green from the ink. You know what, maybe I will. I'll just use a new one for that, just so you can see. Okay. so. Put that right on top. And again, we're gonna tape it down really good. Line it up. Tape the little tabs down. That way you've got something to tape to. Like I said, my first round of kaleidoscope stencils, I didn't have those little tabbies on them. And then afterwards I'm like, you know, that would might not be a bad idea. <laughs> and now they work perfectly because I've got the different layers that you can just line the tabbies up and tape it on down. All right, so now I have covered it up with my mask and I'm going to come back in. I'm gonna come back in. Oop. And let's rinse this out. And let's play with a new color. This color is very unique. It's got it interference to it which means that when you turn it one way it's one color and when you turn it another it's another color a few of these have got this blue has got an interference to it this black has got an interference to it which means when you look at it one way it's one color but when you look at it another direction it's a different color and i'm going to come in here Ooh, that was a little wet Ooh, that was a really little wet let's see if i can get some of that Oh, I hope I didn't just ruin it, but you know what? It's only paper. That was really wet. So less water <laughs> with, with your 
fine tech. Water to open them up. And then if you need it, if you're doing something that, that requires it to be loose and, and flowy, then you have that opportunity. But then if you're using it like I am, where you want it a little thicker and a little um, not uh, in between a paste, it can't be a paste, but it can't be a paint either. And I'm just going to do this background. And little bit of water. Ooh, just a tiny little bit. I'm almost afraid to add water. Oh no, that was perfect. Less is more. Start with just a little bit of water. And if you need to loosen it up a little bit more, go ahead. But I'm just going around my entire stencil. And the paint goes such a long way. Little bit of water. Ooh, just a little bit. Oh, I know that was too much. Okay, I think I've got it everywhere. Even where I maybe got too much. And then maybe we take a little bit. So, I want you to see what color does that look like to you as the background? Does that look like kind of a greeny, bluey? I just rinsed out my brush. And this is the color I got. This isn't greeny, bluey at all. It's kind of a coppery. Let's see what happens if we put a little bit on. So on white, you can see where that burgundy-esque color comes from but you can kind of see as it dries that interference that I'm talking about. It's going to have this burgundy coppery color on one end. And then if you move it, it's going to have this bluey, beautiful, greeny shimmery to another end. That's on white versus on black. On the white, you get the hint of that blue green. You get the hint of it. But on black, that's really what you see. So pretty. So pretty. All right, maybe I add just a little bit of gold in here. Maybe just a little. Just to add some just a little bit of brightness and again you would not be able to do this with the Yasutomo it just doesn't have enough pigment okay so let's see what we got. You don't know until you know. So that's where we are. And then let's pull it on out. So I was able to pull that paint up, leaving the negative behind. So you now have that black from the paper coming through, not a black ink, but a black from the paper coming through. 
all using a baby wipe. And this background, it looks like metal. It's shimmery, but not bam. It, it is not too much in your face. It looks like a, a I don't know, a, a, is it verdigris? A, a, a. It's just so pretty, a weathered copper, all done with paint. I did this one the other day and it's now dried all with paint but that is what this paint is for this paint is to be it, it has um, the pigment is so much more that it gives you the opportunity to not only work on, oh yeah, here, look at that. One color one way, another color another way. I love the Yasutomo and there is absolutely a place for the Yasutomo without question, but I think there's also a place for the fine tech. And while I know that the price is high, I also know that it lasts a long time. It very well be maybe something that you have for years before you have to replace. I just think that making that background, making that background with the color and that can be a little loose that doesn't have to be um, that can be definitely more painty you do want to paint it on doing that background and let's just be willy-nilly about it little water to maybe spread it around a little bit. All I want to do is be sure that it covers my stencil. And then let's add another color. just kind of willy-nilly and maybe a little bit of the yellow and then let's take our background or our main stencil put that down on top Oop, wrong direction oh see look at it already oh Nope, not enough. But you never know till you try, right? Get some good green in there. Okay, we're just going to go for it. Stencil. Tape. 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 Get it down on all the tabs. That way you've got time to to go and to do it gives you that that time that you can then really get in there so you want to tape it down really good because I'm gonna take that baby wipe 
and we're going to go again and I'm going to go and start pulling that color out. And I'm going in the direction of the veining of the leaves. So now I'm just going to do it and get it done and move on, get as much up of it as I can, show you how fast it actually can be done. Pull another baby wipe just to pick up any last little bit of color. That's where I'm at. I'm going to pull another baby wipe just to pull up any last little bit of color that I can get. Looks good to me. I'm going to put my background on or my mask for my top so I can do my background. Down, down, down. Let's go with this color here and see what we get. Too much water. And just paint that in. So I'm just painting it in. Again, not able to do the, the, the Yasutomo is great for accents, but not for this much paint. It doesn't have the pigment in it to give you the depth of color that you need or that you're looking for. So you can see when you get right down to it, it's pretty darn fast. I'm a go, go, go kind of girl. That's a lot of water. Just add a little bit of gold here and there. Just to give it that beautiful background. Okay, done. We're gonna let it go. We're gonna see what happens. Let's take off our first mask. Let's take off our second mask. And it is what it is. Oh, but it's so pretty. And then let's trim it out and get rid of the hot mess off the sides. about fast and easy and beautiful.
totally different way of using watercolor paints with black paper and your stencils. Ooh. Okay. Holy smokes, artichokes. We did a lot today. We, oh, this one, now that it's drying, look at how beautiful it is as it's drying. Oh my gosh. See, the paint is dry. It's the paper that's still a little wet. But as it dries, it even come, it, it just, the paint becomes even prettier. <laughs> I didn't know that that was possible, but it is. Okay, so what did we do today? Well, the first thing we did is we talked about, we talked about Yasutomo paints. Again, in my opinion, everybody should own this. I just believe that for the price, it gives you such an opportunity to add a little shimmer and sheen to just about anything you want. And we've always carried this and will continue to carry this. But then I saw the fine tech and I went, oh my gosh, this is one of the more expensive sets because it's a 12 pack. The rest of the sets are mostly in six pack and we will start bringing those in. My understanding is that the colors are not duplicated. And the beautiful thing is if you use more of one color than another, you can just replace that one color. Is this a must have? Oh, it depends upon who you are. Is it, a, is it a need or is it a want? That depends upon you. Or maybe you look at both of them and say, no, I'm passing on both of them, which is perfectly okay. At least you know that now by watching what I've done. At least you've, you've realized, yeah, this is not for me at all. And look at my hands are not bad. See, easy peasy. Um, <laughs> my hands are not bad, but you have to decide for yourself. I'm not gonna say that this is better than this or that this is less than than this. They're two different products doing two different things. Yes, the colors look the same. Yes, they're typical, they, they both are pearlescent watercolors, but they do different things and are meant for different things. So you are the decision maker when it comes to these. We took my stencils and we played with literally just ink, just ink. And then we threw some Yasutomo on top. And then we played in the fine tech on black watercolor paper and made such beautiful things. All with a baby wipe. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> So, so what do we have for you on the YouTube yummies today? Oh my gosh. And then we've got the versus stamps. Okay. So I suppose I should stamp something. Really, I should. Um, we've got versus stamps. So we always bring out two sets of stamps with every uh, two sets of my Simply Defined Kaleidoscope stencils. I always bring out two sentiment stamps and this time is absolutely no different. These are done by Versus who is owned by Arkham Wild and Friends. The stamps are thick, they're lovely, they're beautiful, they stamp amazing and I love the sentiments. So I get to pick the sentiment which is kind of nice and I try to pick sentiments that go with the theme of the stencils or what I think you'll be able to use. The sentiments are $11.99 a set. They are definitely on a YouTube yummy. Um, this one's never been used before, so I might need to stamp off a couple times before I get a good image. So every time I stamp, my black is getting a little bit darker and a little bit darker because I, I this is a brand new stamp. So you either are gonna wanna wash it a little bit with Dawn, you're gonna wanna stamp off like I'm doing. So pretty. This one says, memories are a gift to be open when those we love are far away. And we could take that and we could grab this one and we could trim this out
Okay, so now I can trim it out better. Now I can see what I'm working with. You, I'm sure, would use a trimmer. Me, not so much. I just kind of go with the flow of it. Boy, that bottom is wonky. And then we could take a piece of black paper and, oh my gosh, we could bring over our fine tech. And I suppose I could do a little bit of gold. then put that on there and trim that out. It's still wet, but hey, no guts, no glory. I don't know where I'd want to put it. We could put it there. You get the idea. We've got two versus sets and they do them just for me at Scrapbooking Made Simple, which is very kind. Usually verses are sold um, as individual stamps and I like them as a set because then for the, um, it's their $12, so that's $2.40 off of 12 would make them $10.60, I think, is that about right? I'm thinking $10.60. Um, I think you get some lovely sentiments. Like this one here is the caring expressions and it, one of them is a bird, um, a bird doesn't sing because it hears an answer. It sings because it has a song. I mean, how lovely is that? That's Maya Angelou. And um, then may you always have love to share, health to spare, and friends who care, and with sympathy. So they always give you something that is um, that that is useful. The this is the set. Um, what did we call it? Happy thoughts. So think lovely thoughts, and they will lift you up in the air. Happy day. You deserve all the beautiful moments of a perfect day. The one I used. Memories are a gift to be open when those you love are far away and send, sending smiles your way. So both of these are on sale. They're exclusive to us. I love Ark on Wild for doing these for us. Bless their heart. And I love the Versus brand. Those we have for you. Then I also have, gosh, that would have been horrible if I didn't stamp anything, right? But I've done that before where it's like, oops, <laughs> never got to the stamp part. <laughs> I was too excited about, about the, 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 the pretty part. I mean, gosh, you could just, you just use them on, they're just so pretty. So then I have got for you the Simply Defined Kaleidoscope Stencils. These are exclusive here. I did not use the birdhouse with the fence today, but you will see it in oodles and oodles of samples. And I showed you that was one of the ones I started with. So $9.99 a set. All three stencils come in the set. So you're actually getting six sten or three stencils for $9.99 and not just one because you can use them all on their own. I will have the fine tech for you. Again, the most beautiful colors, truly. You make the decision, yay or nay. Do you put it on your wish list for later? We will be carrying them, but now they'll be, I think they're either 25 or 30% off the set. And then of course the Yasutomo, which we've always had. And if you don't have these, they're just a great little go-to for the price. They truly are. And finally, the last thing we'll have for you is uh, some watercolor papers. The postcards in white and black, the A4 in the black, so that if you are wanting to play, you've got an opportunity to use really great product to do that. 
Okay, let's play with samples because that's really the most important part. Okay, I love the samples. Everybody loves the samples. Again, this one, I'm going to zoom on in just a little bit. This one was done by James, my son. First card ever. He just quite didn't get it. <laughs> he just quite didn't get it. Get it, get it, get it right. But that's okay. He did an amazing job, and now he learns that, that in his opinion, cards can open any way you want them to. That is exactly what he told me. He said, Mom, it's fine. It opens. You can, I'll put a happy, I'll put a sentiment on the inside, and, and it is what it is, and I happen to agree with him. He did an amazing job. And then... Here are samples where we were just playing. This was me just playing when I got the, the prototypes of my, of my um, stencils. This was the first one I did as a prototype. And this was the first one I did as a prototype. Now, I want you to notice up here, it's a little shimmery and shiny. Also on the bird, it's a little shimmery and shiny. That's because we added the Yasutomo paint to it just to give just a little bit of a sheen to it. But there's the birdhouse. And then here's a birdhouse, very soft. Very soft stenciling, very pastel, looks beautiful. Oh, I got lots of birdhouses here. Here we have lifting the paint. And this one was done very mixed media style not as controlled as mine. This was far more mixed media style. And then we have one with the leaves that is Christmas to made to be looking like they are pine. Honorary SMS girl Katie made this for us. And here we have a birdhouse. And here we have a birdhouse. Same stencil. Same stencil. Two dramatically different looks. So it's all about the colors that you use. Here we have with the fine tech watercolors. And another birdhouse. Talk about soft and subtle. Then again, big and bold. And, it, and again, Yasutomo. Can you see the shimmer and the shine on that? That's done with the Yasutomos. Big and bold birdhouse. Versus soft and subtle. One stencil set, you can do both looks. And then the girls played on vellum a little bit. Oh, it's upside down, Stacy. And again with the fine tech paints and the Sentiments, all the sentiments that we've been showing are versus sentiments. Most of them are from this release. There's a few that they used from the last release of stencils, and we still have the, the versus stamps. And then this is just an abstract with the fine tech, just beautiful, very, very beautiful. The bird and the flowers and, and the birdhouse. 
And then let me bring over the next set. So the leaves, look at how Caribbean and tropical that is, all done with ink. And I have a feeling that this is a reactive ink. And then the birdhouse, sending smiles your way. But then look at this birdhouse where the color was lifted using reactive ink. Pretty positive it was lifted using reactive inks where the stencil sat down on top of it. After the ink went down, a wet stencil sat down on top of it and stayed there to activate those inks and then lift it off. And then look at how lovely is this. It's soft and elegant. All done with inks. And stamped right on. Our birdhouse. Our birdhouse. And I've got a few of these. One. Two. Three. to give you that beautiful watercolor look. Think about putting three or four of these together, tying a bow around them and giving them as a gift to somebody to use to send handmade cards to somebody else. Love the blues on the back of this. It just makes the, the leaves just pop. And then here we have ink with the fine tech. So the first thing I did was the leaves in the ink. Then I came back and I actually did this one. It's not finished yet. I could put a sentiment on it, but I don't know where my sentiments went. Um, <laughs> what that I had done. <laughs> oh, here, wait. <laughs> could put a sentiment on it. <laughs> But I wanted to play with ink and then go back and do the fine tech so that you have a combination of the two. It doesn't have to be one or the other. You can mix them both. And then look at this one. Oh, so pretty. And last but not least, I don't think I showed this one. So you have options, that is for sure. You have options with the stencils and how you want to use them. You have options in the paints and what makes your heart happy. You've got oodles of options. Let me tilt on back and say, look at, we did it. I got through Vertico. Psst. Nah, that can't hold me back. <laughs> and I haven't yawned or fallen asleep yet. Yay. <laughs> now I get to finish up what I have to do today, get this loaded in time, and then I think I'm going to go home and take a nap. <laughs> We'll see. As long as I, as long as my meds keep working, it's really the nausea that I get with the vertigo that just causes me to just be in just, I'm not, I'm not human anymore. 
But as long as I can keep that under control, it's all wahoo ka -choo. All right, curbside pickup has started at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Watch the video on our, on our website, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Look underneath the logo of Scrapbooking Made Simple and look for the words that say curbside pickup available at scrapbookingmadesimple.com and then watch it before you place your orders, please. We're, we're, we're going to try. We're going to see. It may work. It may work famously and it may be an epic fail that we have to learn from and change from. But if you don't try, you don't know. My dad always said, do something. Do something. Even if it turns out wrong, do something. Because if you don't do anything, you will never know. If you do something and it ends up wrong, you'll learn from it and do better next time. And if it ends up right, well, if you hadn't done it at all, you would have gained nothing. So curbside pickup, scrapbooking made simple. We're gonna give it a whirl and see what happens. Where, for those of you who do not live locally, where do you find all of these great products? You find them at scrapbookingmadesimple.com. All right, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com, and I will see you guys all next week. Hopefully without my room spinning and spinning, but right now, I'm A-OK. -okay. Talk to you guys later. Bye, have a super week, okay? Toodles!